today we're talking about the 85 millimeter. I don't care what 85 millimeter you're working with, we're just talking about the 85 millimeter. This is my favorite lens. This is gonna be the lens I probably use the most throughout this art project. And so I felt like it was important to go into detail of why I like, love, and respect this lens so much. So I'm gonna dive into some history about my background in photography. And I know it's gonna be kind of long and drawn out and it doesn't have a lot to do with the 85 at first but I would really love if you guys hung in there because it is just kind of a key part of my story. I got my start in photography as a second shooter doing wedding photography and I worked with a really well-known photographer in the area named Brad Howe. He ended up becoming my mentor and a really good friend. But, starting out, I knew literally nothing, and my first wedding with him was my first time picking up a professional camera. I don't remember much about the wedding, but I do remember my camera and my lens, which was a Canon 7D and a Nifty 50. And the first question I asked Brad to my embarrassment was, how do you zoom in with this thing? I don't know why, probably against his better judgment, maybe it was a miracle, but I know it was a lot of kindness involved. He, after that, hearing that question, invited me to do another wedding the next weekend with him. And from there, I began to learn. For the next year, we probably did over 20 weddings, probably close to 30. For a wedding photographer, you know that that number is crazy. It was insane. It was a lot of weddings, a lot of images. And through that, it was a lot of practice. We had some weekends where we were triple booked. I know one weekend we went from my town one day, that was a Friday, to a town that was 45 minutes away and then we had to wake up the next day after the second wedding and on a Sunday we ended up going to a town that was about like 200 miles away and then we had to come back that night. So it was a lot. Um, and through that, I absorbed, I learned, I asked questions. Every wedding I did with Brad, uh, I was probably a little underpaid, but at the time, I thought it was good money. So I got $100 per wedding, and I would be shooting all day, and every wedding, I would take that $100, and I would save it. And I ended up saving for my first kit, which was a Canon 5D, the OG 5D, and I didn't have enough money for a lens, and so my good friend Bob at the time just let me have his Nifty 50. This is where the 85 came in. The whole time I was shooting with Brad, he had the same setup every wedding. Now he had every lens you could possibly dream of at the time, but the same setup, which was a 35, a 135, and an 85. These are all the top of the line Canon lenses at that time, and his 85 was the 1.2. Every week, no matter what wedding it was, it was the same setup. And through that setup, throughout most of the wedding, I would say he was using that 85. He loved the 85. And who could argue with him? Because if you know anything about the 85 1.2, it is a stupid sharp lens that produces amazing results if you know how to use it. With Brad though, it was like a different level. He not only loved that lens, but 
he used it so well. He knew exactly how to use the lens, exactly where to focus with that lens, exactly what f-stop was the sharpest with that lens. He used it in every setting you could possibly use it in. And he used it in such a way that was beyond professional. It was wild. It was like an extension of him. And for me, that was the pinnacle. That was my goal to one day be able to shoot with an 85. That's all I wanted. And as the years went on and I continued to shoot with Brad, our kits both changed, you know. I got more money, he got more money. We ended up moving to Sony, which was a big switch. And he still ended up getting an 85 for Sony and, you know, for the most part, kept the same lens structure. and. I got different bodies and tried to expand on my knowledge as well. But I never got an 85. I either never had the money or I was focusing on something else. I tried to expand into video as well. So it just never ended up happening. Now, as time goes on, of course, I start building up a clientele as well. And I started to build my own business. So Brad and I started shooting with each other less. And we would still do a wedding or two with each other, but it wasn't like it was that first and even second year. But in 2017, we did our last wedding together. Now this wedding was different for two reasons. For one, Brad was the second shooter, and I was the lead. And for two, I rented gear because I wasn't gonna be shown up. I was gonna be the head photographer. So I rented an 85. For the first time in my life, I was using an 85. I rented bodies, I rented other lenses, and I, made sure that I was going to be the one getting the amazing photos that I had always wanted. And I was going to deliver to this couple. As I'm shooting this wedding, I'm chimping. I'm looking at my images the whole time, seeing what I'm getting with this lens, being so proud, knowing that I'm getting banger after banger. This couple is going to be so happy, and more importantly, I am going to get better images than Brad is because I have this tool now. I have become the master. The student has become the master. And then it's time for the couple's portraits. Brad and I are going back and forth taking these pictures. We're getting the pictures we both want, showing each other. They're looking great. The light is soft. And then we both see the shot. Anyone in wedding photography knows that there is a shot. It's the shot that you give the couple that you're proud of the night of. You edit it right away. And it's the shot that they're gonna use for their profile. It's the shot that's gonna go right up onto your Instagram. And it is the shot that uh, you're most proud of. As I go to take the shot, I'm using the 85 because of course, why would I use anything else? It's the 85. And I look over and I see Brad is using a 35. And I shake my head as if I was getting the shot because I had the 85. We both look down, we're both super excited. And then, as we're comparing, I look at his shot and realize he got the shot. He got it. With a 35, he got it. Now, of course, this was me being so laser focused on the gear that I was using. And Brad was seeing the whole picture. He had the whole vision and he was in control the whole time. Now, of course, after that wedding, the couple got their picture. 
they used his shot and put it up on Facebook. And um, this is, again, after that wedding that Brad and I didn't really talk anymore. And it wasn't because of the shot. Um, it was actually because I was going through my own shit in my life at the time. And I was depressed and I didn't really want to talk to anyone. And so we would text every once in a while, but you know, we didn't really work with each other after that. And um, then in 2020, you know, the shit hit the fan. And I ended up getting a text that Brad had passed. Now, I don't want to focus on that because, um, you know, that's a negative conversation and he did so many more positive things in his life to glorify the negative thing that happened. So what I do want to focus on is what he taught me and it is, you know, it's something I think a lot of us could really take away from photography in general. You see, his favorite tool was the 85, but it was just that. It was a tool. He became the master of his tool. He didn't put this on a pedestal. He didn't make this the end-all be-all. He could switch in and out and get whatever shot he wanted with whatever lens he wanted. He was the craftsman after Brad had passed. Um, I ended up buying an 85. Um, and it was partially because I had always wanted an 85. It was also for sentimental reasons. I remember I called up one of my photography friends that day and uh, I told him, I was like, Dude, I, I got it. And it's, it's really, it was fucking surreal. Uh, and so with all that, I want to kind of talk about the lessons that I've learned from this fucking 85 millimeter lens. We get so caught up in what everybody else has. I've made this kind of video before that we lose sight of what we do have. So with that, this is my love letter to the 85 millimeter and also kind of my letter to Brad. Thank you for showing me what to do and how to do it. And um, I think for everyone else out there, take what you have and become a craftsman with it. Be the best photographer you can be with it. Save up and buy the thing you want, not because you think it will make you a better photographer, but because you'll know how to use it and you'll be able to see more pictures with it. Uh, that's all I've got. Thank you guys for listening. And uh, I will see you next week. I've got a bunch of videos that I was able to shoot this week and so yeah uh, I know this is kind of a weird weird video uh, to see on this channel but I felt like it was really important to talk about this lens because you're gonna be seeing a lot more pictures that were taken with this lens in the next few weeks and um, that's kind of part of the reason why. 
Let me know what your favorite lens is in the comments. I would love to have a discussion about lenses and just, you know, I feel like everybody kind of has that piece of gear that like opened their eyes to something. Um, and this was mine. And I didn't have it until a few years ago. So, thanks, peace. I will see you guys next week.